Credit Karma makes building your credit straightforward and stress-free with help from our credit builder. Sign up today at creditkarma.com and start enhancing your financial health. Credit Karma, your partner in building a brighter financial future. Credit Builder Plan is serviced by Credit Karma Credit Builder and requires a line of credit and savings account provided by Cross River Bank member FDIC. Hide your parents. The Menendez brothers are coming home for Thanksgiving. This is the Ford Show. What a monumental day here. The Menendez brothers, they're going to come home, Vegas. They're coming home for Thanksgiving, baby. Hide the shotguns. The Menendez brothers are going to be on the loose. You've been waiting all day for that specific intro. You were like, I'm going to do something special, and then you throw that at me. Hopefully, they're not hunting the Thanksgiving turkey. Oh, hopefully not. Yeah, because that's not good. But, hey, listen, we got a lot of talk about this. Yeah. I, so- I'm very opinionated about this subject. Yeah, I know. This is going to be great, and this is the cover art for this podcast. This is the Ford Show. We are coming to you. From the MurderMyDebt.com studio, MurderMyDebt.com can help you with your mortgage rates as well. As they continue to drop, they can also save you money there. They can also get you out of debt. See what they can do for you, MurderMyDebt.com. All right. It came out today, prosecutors recommended Thursday in a press conference that was late to start but early to finish. Prosecutors recommended that Eric and Lyle Menendez, if you don't remember these guys, they are in the background of a Mark Jackson basketball card. That's it. Oh, that's what they're known for. They also shot and killed their parents, both of them, mother and father, both brothers, in cold blood, with a shotgun in 1989. I was only six years old. I don't remember the murders. I don't either. When they happened. But I do remember 95, 96, uh, when they finally got convicted after uh, on the third trial, because the first two were hung, much like Joey Vegas. And they, they didn't come to a conclusion. So they finally did in 95, 96. And they what, got were there sentenced. three trials or only two? I think there was only two. I thought there was two hung. So the, the first one was- a, I could what, be wrong. The first one, uh, yeah, w- they didn't get in a verdict, but I thought yeah. the second one they did, but I, I could be wrong. So that was a long time. In 1989, they killed their parents in their Beverly Hills home. So, you know, they were they were living uh, check to mouth. What is that expression? When you live paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. I don't know. So like hand to mouth when you're like, is it hand to mouth? This foot, is what I get and, for foot and mouth. No, that's a disease. Oh, foot and mouth, hand, foot, hand and mouth disease. Hand, foot and mouth disease. Anyway, these two guys shot and killed their parents with a shotgun because apparently they were being uh, molested by the father. We'll get there. So L.A. County District Attorney George Gascon, uh, who is on his way out, announced during a Thursday news conference that his office would recommend the brothers receive a new sentence of 50 years to life, which you would think, well, okay, well, they still have 25 more years to go. But because they were under the age of 26 at the time of the crimes, they would be eligible for parole immediately. Resentencing must now be approved by a judge, and the state parole board would have to sign off on the brother's release. I came to a place where I believe under the law, resentencing is appropriate, Gascon said. He said some members of his office opposed the decision because they don't believe, they don't buy into the, the sexual al- uh, assault allegations of the, from the father to the kids, to the brothers. The brothers were sentenced in 96 to life in prison, as they should get for murdering both of their parents. And Joey Vegas, they were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Lyle Menendez was 21. Eric Menendez was 18. Admitted they fatally shot their entertainment executive father, Jose Menendez, and their mother, Kitty Menendez. You think Kitty's a nickname? It is. Okay. The brothers said that they feared their parents were about to kill them to stop people from finding out that Jose Menendez had sexually abused Eric Menendez for years. The brother's extended family has pleaded 
for their release, saying they deserve to be free after decades behind bars. Several family members have said that in today's world, which is more aware of the impact of sexual abuse, the brothers would not have been convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life. But they weren't, they didn't do the murders in today's day. I know, that's the thing. Multiple members of their extended family, including their aunt, Joan Anderson Vandermolen, uh, sat in the first few rows of Thursday's news conference. Vandermolen was Kitty Menendez's sister and has publicly supported their release. Family members said they flew across the country on six hours' notice to be in attendance. So Kitty, the mother, her sister, is sitting here. What I'm wondering is, is Kitty Menendez rolling in her grave, as the old expression goes, watching her sister back up her sons who shot her with a shotgun? We'll never know the answer. I'm not asking you to answer the question. But I'm just saying, like, these two guys, Eric, Lyle, what kind of a name is Lyle anyway? I don't think that's his real name, is it? Oh. Isn't it Joseph or something? Is it? But his nickname was Lyle? I don't know. Um, but, but they shot and they shot and killed their parents. And they weren't kids. Yes. They were adults when they did this. This wasn't something like they were 14 or 12 or 10 or 9 and they got a shotgun and shot their parents because the parents were molesting them at the time. No. One was 21, one was 18. They were adults in the eyes of everybody, pretty much. And that, and you killed your parents. Not only did you kill your parents, but you shot them both and then you ran out of ammo. So then, instead of saying, oh, F this, you went out, reloaded, came back in and continued to shoot your mother because she wasn't dead yet. So not all of the Menendez family members support resentencing. Attorneys for Milton Anderson, he's the 90-year-old brother of Kitty Menendez. So it's, it's, it's safe to say that Kitty would probably still be alive to this day. She's got two siblings that are into their 90s. But he filed a legal briefing asking the court to keep the brother's original punishment. Quote, they shot their mother, Kitty, and then reloaded to ensure her death, which is what you just mentioned, Joe, Joe yeah. Vegas. The evidence remains overwhelmingly clear. The jury's victor verdict was just, and the punishment fits the heinous crime. We have to remember these two goons shot and killed their own parents. Not some dude and some chick at a bar. And not only did they kill their parents, but then they went on a shopping spree that only any of us could dream of. And ended up sitting courtside at a Knicks game, which I would dream to be, right next to Spike Lee, and ended up on a Hoops Mark Jackson trading card. So it's not like, it's not like they killed their parents, and then they were, oh my God, so heartbroken. It was a fit of rage. It was this, it was that, it was whatever. They turned around and went on a, a what I believe to be $700,000 shopping spree and ended up sitting courtside for a Knicks game. So it's not like they killed them and they were devastated and they were bad and they walked into the police station with blood on themselves and they turned themselves in and oh my God, my father was raping me and my brother had my back and we shot and killed my parents because my stupid cunt of a mother wanted to cover it up. That's not how this was. They killed them and then they went and they partied. On their dad's dime, by the way. So let's remember that. When we're rah, 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 let these two psychos out. Now, now, do, do I think that they have a threat to society? No, I, I don't think so from what I know of them, which is very little, because they did kill both of their parents. And so I don't think there's, they're a threat to anybody else. I don't think they're going to, I mean, nobody else uh, supposedly raped them uh, or molested them. So I don't think they're a threat to society. But do I think they should get out? Hell no. You killed your parents, you partied afterwards, you had no remorse, 
And and now it's coming out uh, 40 years later, 30 years later, that, oh, uh, they were raping me. Well, you know, there there's a, one other kid. I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. There's one other guy who was in the music business, in some boy band, some shit. There's some Mexican. Menudo. Yeah, he's accused Menudo. Jose Menendez of, of, of doing doing some evil things to him as well. So it, there's, there's, there's smoke to this fire, which I'm not, look, totally. If you are being sexually assaulted, molested, whatever the case may be, you, you, you can't, this isn't the wild, wild west. There are plenty of good humans who react this way and go and do something crazy to people who are doing evil, despicable shit to people, and they take the law into their own hands, as you say, like it's the wild, wild west, like Cain Velasquez, who well, is in trouble. Yeah, he's in jail. And you can't take it, you can't take matters in your own hands. At the end of the day, Kitty very well could have been an accomplice if she knew about it and was going to cover it up or whatever the case may be. But you can't take the law into your own hands like these kids did or these. They weren't they were, kids. They were kids then. Well, they're kids no. to us. I'm 41 years old. The 21, that's a kid to me now. Yeah, but they're but not. But technically they were adults. They're, they're not yes. kids. They, they, no, they're not so, kids. And who cares if, if the dad molested them? Like the, the, the dad, yes. Did he deserve to die? Yeah, I believe so. He did. I, I don't feel sorry for the guy. Let's just say that. If he was doing. Well, correct. If he Some was people do don't believe that he Correct. Was, so but. if he was doing that, yeah. you know, he deserves to die. If he w didn't do that and they're just making this up, you know, we'll see. The, the, the district attorney believes that Eric and, and Lyle have paid their debt. Gascon said he made the final decision only an hour before the news conference, which could explain why he was late. Jerk. Despite their life sentences, Gascon said the brothers worked on redemption and rehabilitation inside prison. Now, the L.A. district attorney is in the middle of a tough re-election, as we just mentioned. He's getting beat by 20-some points against uh, a former prosecutor, Nathan Hockman, who has blamed Gascon's progressive reform policies for recent high-profile murders and increased retail crime. Gascon said Thursday that his office has recommended resentencing for some 300 offenders, including people behind bars, for murder. Hawkman on Thursday questioned the timing of Gascon's announcement, coming less than two weeks before the election, and calling it a desperate political move. He said he is unable to form his own opinion on the case without access to confidential records and relevant witnesses. If I became DA and the case is still pending at that time, I will conduct a review. Uh, consistent with how I would review any case. So it's funny that what pissed off the Melendez by the Menendez brothers was this Netflix documentary, which I now have to watch. I chose McMahon over Menendez, and now I have to go back and watch the Menendez brother uh, brothers Netflix series. But that pissed those guys off. Those guys were pissed off. But it's this series, really, that has now brought us to this. Now, I should also say that, you know, uh, Eric or Lyle, whichever one, once wrote a letter to a cousin talking about the abuse, uh, the Menendez case, has gained new traction in recent weeks after Netflix began streaming the true crime drama Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story. Roy Rossello, a former member of the Latin pop group Menudo, also recently came forward saying he was drugged and raped by Jose Menendez, the boy's father, when he was a teen in the 1980s. Rossello spoke about his abuse in the 2023 Peacock docuseries Menendez plus Menudo, Boys Betrayed. His allegations are part of the evidence listed in the petition filed last year by the Menendez brothers' attorney seeking the review of their case. Rossello's assertion that he was raped twice, not once, but twice, by Jose Menendez as part of the Menendez brothers' petition. Menudo was signed under RCA Records, which Jose Menendez headed 
at the time. So what what brought their case to new light just recently here is is the thing that they hated. They did they do not like that docu series. And I can't Pro- remember probably why. Probably cuz they're not getting but... any money. I mean that's probably why they're not getting any money. So I wonder like where did all the parents where did where did the fathers wealth go who got the wealth are these kids gonna get some of that wealth i mean they could probably do it under under the table type shit if they get released if oh, are you kidding me they're gonna have book deals tv deals. oh i can't wait for the podcast the menendez brothers pod baby it's yeah. coming you know it's coming that podcast is coming who's gonna get their first interview what's it gonna cost are the brothers going to have individual agents? Are they going to be represented by the same person? They're going to have their own teams. These guys are dying to get out of prison. Not because they want to be free, but they got some opportunity to get rich. Because it's not very often that you get to murder your parents and then you get to profit off of it. That doesn't happen very often. This is a rare occurrence. This is a one in a million. Because, like, you know, like OJ, when OJ got off from killing Nicole and Ron, he couldn't profit. He tried. He got shut down every time he tried to make a profit off of it. Same thing is probably going to go if Casey Anthony ever tries to cash in. So it's a rare, it's a rare occurrence where you could try to, you, you, you have a, an ability, a path to cash in after you commit murder and these guys are going to fucking cash in Joey Vegas. Yes. So they're definitely going to cash in, but not from the estate. So according to this article, which is pretty recent, um, the estate was worth 14.5 million. All right. 14. (laughs) So when they spent 700,000 on their little, the little 89 spree, I mean, that's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. Yeah, so, but according to California statute, um, it's when someone f- commits a felony murder, they cannot profit off the victim's estate. But if it was deemed a justifiable homicide, the statute would not apply. However, there would not be m- much uh, left from the estate in general because te- at least $10.8 million had been spent about half going to the brother's lawyer's and so then, the brothers' lawyers were paid through the estate? Yes. And then in the six months following the murder, oh Lyle and Eric reportedly blew through $1 million on parties, travel, and shopping. Lyle spent more than $15,000 on three Rolex watches the day before his parents' funeral. Witnesses, uh, witnesses and he would later testify, in addition to thousands of dollars in gambling losses, Eric had also hired a tennis coach for 60000 a year in the hopes of going pro. Um, and this is all after they killed their parent. Yes. So this, so I mean, this this is the type of thing. Why are we talking about this? Why are we just like, well, they did their crime, they did the their, their crime, they did the time. No, they actually killed two people. You do 30 years, that's not enough for two people. They're gonna loophole themselves out of jail with this 20 under 26 thing. They're yeah. going to get loopholed. Yeah. And, and, and guess what? When they go in front of the parole board, you, you don't think the parole board sees the headlines? They're not going to say no to these guys. They'll get crucified. They have to say yes. They have to let them out now. They have to. I mean, you don't. But you do. For the, 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 the public perspective. You almost have to now. I don't. I disagree. I, honestly, I didn't really have an opinion about this until now. I don't think they should be allowed out. They killed their parents. Now, if they killed some ex girlfriend and their new and her new boyfriend, fine. Let them out. What's the difference? They killed somebody. It doesn't matter. The difference is, so, some could the say, the difference is, is that the weight should be carried. There should be more weight carried when it's your own parent. No, absolutely I know not. not. In the, I know not in the, the 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 legal sense. I know that. 
Not yeah, legally, but, then, but, no. you're, but you're saying, well, if it was an ex girlfriend, then if it was an ex girlfriend, then they could be let out. Because you, could, you can, you because, would be behind that. Because you would understand. Because I could understand, and we've talked about it on this show before. I could understand a rage kill. But killing is still killing. You shouldn't correct to me. To me unless it was an accidental murder, okay. Um, which we know that wasn't the case because well, they went and reloaded. Well, correct. They didn't. Yeah, there was no. They murdered them, cold blood. Um, and but just the way they acted, it it again. If yeah. Now again, if if it comes to light that it's a hundred percent fact that uh you know their their know, dad molested them. I don't know if it them, ever could. Well, I don't know if it ever could either. But it, and that's the problem is it's yeah. never it can never be proven because he one can't defend himself. It's going to um, be the two guys that are still it, yeah. alive. It's going to be a he said nobody said because the guy can't speak. Correct. But the fact that a you were older, okay, because I don't think your dad was sexually abusing you at eighteen, okay, or seventeen or sixteen. It was probably when they were younger. So you think this was uh, something that was happening when they were kids? I, I'm assuming so because when you're old enough, you could, your dad's old. He, I mean, not old, but he's older. You could probably beat the shit out of him. Two against one, you just beat the shit out of him. You don't kill him, and then you go to the cops. Now I can understand the fear because the dad was rich. Okay, the dad was a high profile CEO. And, and don't get me wrong, I am not above thinking that I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to be jumping through a bunch of hoops and crawling through a bed of hot coals just to get a good deal. Save a few bucks on some cellular. Nope. It's got to be way easier than that. No hoops, no BS. So that's why Mint Mobile is the place to be. I'm telling you right now, nobody has made it easier than Mint Mobile to get a wireless plan for 15 bucks a month. With the purchase of a three-month plan, I'm going to tell you right now, I called them out on it. Turns out it is really that easy to get a wireless plan for 15 a month. The longest part of the process was the time that I spent on hold to break up with my old provider. It's easy to switch to Mint Mobile, easy to use their website, easy purchase and activation. Everything is easy. And to get started, go to mintmobile.com forward slash Bubba. There you'll see it right now. Boom. All three month plans are only 15 bucks a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with high speed data and unlimited talk to text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can even use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your old number with you which includes all your contacts and all that stuff you got stored in there to get this new customer offer and a new three-month premium wireless plan for only 15 bucks a month go to mintmobile.com forward slash bubba that's mintmobile.com forward slash bubba cut your wireless bill down to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com forward slash bubba 45 dollars upfront payment required equivalent to 15 a month new customers on first three-month plan only speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional tax fees and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. It's better over here. Now at T-Mobile, get four 5G phones on us and four lines for $25 a line per month when you switch with eligible trade-ins. All on America's largest 5G network. Minimum of four lines for $25 per line per month with auto pay discount using debit or bank account. $5 more per line without auto pay, plus taxes and fees and $10 device connection charge. Phones via 24 monthly bill credits for well-qualified customers. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance on required finance agreement due. Bill credits end if you pay off devices early. Ctmobile.com. The dad had enough money uh, back then to hire a, a hitman to kill his sons, to shut him up. I'm not saying he did or would have. I'm just saying I could see that train of thought. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But the fact that you went on a shopping spree, you bought Rolexes before the funeral, like yeah, you, I mean, they, they had no remorse. They didn't care. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, like, it, it, and it's kind of what I mentioned earlier. If you kill them and you walk into the police station and you're like, yeah, we fucking just killed him because my dad's a fucking kid toucher and he's been abusing my brother for 20 years and we got tired of it. And the mother got pissed because we were going to come forward and it turned into an escalated situation. We got into a fight. There's no security cameras. It's 1989. Yeah. The house isn't cameraed up like it would be today. There's no cell phones. There's no videos. There's nothing. You could say whatever. There was a fight. There was a rage. We got into an argument. We shot. We killed him. He's been raping me for years. He's da 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. But that's not what happened. They killed him. They said, we came home, and they were both dead. We don't know what happened. 
and they went on a shopping spree. And they lied about it. That's the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, they lied about it. And yeah. it wasn't until the cops and the FBI and whomever started putting the pieces of the puzzle together, and they realized, wait a minute, this shit ain't adding up. And they ended up on a Mark Jackson basketball card, sitting courtside while their parents are dead. Doesn't seem like remorse to me. Does not. So they should stay locked up. They probably won't. But again, it it still has to go through it. And, and here's I, the and here's the thing. I don't. I it, well, bank he's, on it. He's gonna. But he's. See, here's the thing. He's gonna file the paperwork tomorrow. Bank on them getting out. And then in two mu- in two weeks, if the other district attorney gets uh, elected, and he goes in there whenever the swearing in is, I'm not sure if it's January the same time the president. I don't know the all of that. But what if he gets sworn in and then says, you know what, I take it back. Now he's going to look like kind of a jerk ass for a couple for half the people. Expect you know? these guys to get out. Smart money is on their getting out. But you know what? There's clearly going to be a wedge. In the family, because Kitty's younger brother, or un- younger than the sister, he's 90, she's 92. No, he's 93. Oh, he's 93? I thought. I don't know. I thought he was 90. Could be 90. Either they're way, old. They're, old. they're in their fucking 90s. He doesn't want these kids out. I mean, they're not kids. Sorry, they're he doesn't fi- want these fi- brothers they're 50 out. Something yeah, they're older than old. us. Now. They're 50 something years old. They don't, he doesn't want them out. So there's going to be a rift there in the family because the family is it's a house divided. I mean, and my thing is, it this is good, this could be a landmark uh, issue. Like, I mean, it could shape, um, and and you know maybe we can talk to uh, you know Lady Justice that we had on previously. Maybe just ask her her opinion. Great, great, great uh, you know, great promo there. You almost like you've done this for a while. I mean, she's going to be on the show next week. And uh, she's a former defense attorney. We'll talk to her about the Menendez brothers. I asked her to come on next week because she couldn't come on tonight because she's at the Thursday night football game as we record this. It is Thursday night, October 24. She's at the Rams Vikings over there at SoFi. So uh, she is couldn't do the show tonight. So I asked her to come on next week. So she's going to come on next week, and we'll we'll throw in the Menendez brothers. But she was originally, I originally asked her to come on so you want to talk about somebody who doesn't show much remorse. Vince McMahon is in, involved now in another lawsuit, a justifiable lawsuit, a lawsuit that he deserves to be in. And uh, it's adding on to the other lawsuit that he's involved in with the Janelle Grant situation. This is a new one. This now does not involve an ex-girlfriend. This one involves ex-ring boys. And for those of you who don't watch professional wrestling and don't know what a ring boy is, a ring boy used to be, back in the day, when I say back in the day, I mean the 80s and the 70s and probably the 60s, there were ring boys, 14-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old, 17-year-old, 12-year-old ring boys who would come and they would come to the arena, and they would help set up, and they'd help set the ring up, and they'd help set up the chair. Ring boys, that's what that meant. And there was a pervert who was a ringside announcer for the WWF, Melvin Phillips, or as he went by, Mel Phillips. And uh, he was sexually exploiting children as young as 12 and 13. So there was a new lawsuit filed uh, within the last 24 hours on behalf of the five former WWF ring boys, alleges McMahon and his wife, Linda, and the WWF and TKO Group Holdings, which is the company that owns the WWF now, the league's parent company, knowingly allowed former ringside announcer Melvin Phillips Jr., or Mel Phillips, as those of us who are familiar know him as, to use his position to sexually exploit children as young as 12 and 13 years old. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is not speculation and innuendo and rumor. Like This is actual. Like This is a known thing within the wrestling business that Mel Phillips did these sorts of things with ring boys. He even made its way all the way to a Donahue episode in 92. 
Phillips lured and manipulated the young boys with promises of meeting famous wrestlers and attending the highly popular wrestling shows, uh, experiences that were otherwise unattainable for these kids, this lawsuit alleges. The McMahons and the WWF allowed Phillips and others to engage in and foster the WWF's rampant cultural and sexual abuse. So, in that day, it was a WWF. Now, of course, it's WWE. But Joey Vegas, this has been a well-known situation. This isn't even disputed at this point. And we all know that Vince knew. Vince knew. Linda knew. Everybody knew. Because let me tell you how the wrestling business works. For those of you who don't know, if we know about shit from the 80s, Vince McMahon knew about the shit in the 80s. Because they were very, very strong with the kayfabe where they didn't let the secrets out. But if we knew the secrets, Joey Vegas, Vince McMahon knew the secrets. Oh, of course he did. Of course. My thing is, if the lawsuit, my thing, the lawsuit's going to TKO. TKO wasn't even around. Endeavor wasn't even around. None of these. So to me, it should be Vince McMahon, Lyndon McMahon, if you're going to do it. Um, and maybe, I mean, I guess that's it, really, because they were the ones that owned it back then. But, I mean, you could expand it to, to probably Hulk Hogan and any of, any of the top superstars probably knew that something was going on. Um, if you really wanted to, I can't confirm that, so I don't know. But you, when you're adding TKO group and all this stuff, I think you're adding for money purposes. I think you're adding for money purposes because you know TKO is not going to want this out there. They're going to shut it up. I mean, it's out there, but I mean, they're going to shut it down. They're going to say, okay, here's 10 million, whatever. Have a nice day. And it's no money to them and they don't care. Vince is, Vince is done. I mean, Vince hasn't been really seen or anything. I think, because I read an article, when I read the article, it stated uh, Linda McMahon, former Trump, blah, blah, blah. I think this is another attempt as far as the, timing of it um to tie something negative to negative negatively to trump i think i i mean it happened there's no doubt it happened but i'm saying the timing of it now a week before the election seems a little sus to me you know because to me it doesn't really make a lot of sense that you that you you file it now it happened in the 80s why didn't you file it 10 months ago or six months ago like you just said, you know what, we're going to file it now, a week before the election. Well, there's, there's also quotes in this lawsuit from the Vince McMahon documentary on Netflix. So this thing was written not terribly long ago. The WWE did not immediately respond to CNN's request for comment. Jessica Rosenberg, an attorney for Vince McMahon, of course, alleged that the says the allegation false. As early as 1992, New York Post columnist Phil Mushnick, who's been a thorn in McMahon's side for years, wrote about it. Now, again, Mushnick in the 80s, or sorry, as early as 92, is writing about this. So for Mushnick to know these allegations, again, you got to remember this is a tight circle business, very tight circle business. So for these types of allegations to get out tells you unequivocal that Vince McMahon knew of it. Unequivocal, no doubt. More than 30 years ago, the columnist Phil Mustang tried to make headlines with these same false claims. Those allegations were never proven, Rosenberg said in a statement. The negligence cl claims against Mr. McMahon that were asserted today rely on these same absurd, defamatory, and utterly meritless statements by Mr. Mushner. He will, we will vigorously defend Mr. McMahon and are confident the court will find that these claims are untrue and unfounded. That's all false. None of that is true. None of that in that statement is, is true at all. In fact, if you're going to believe somebody, if you have in one hand Phil Mushnick, in the other hand, you have carny piece of shit Vince McMahon, and we're trying to figure out who's telling the truth. 
who are we going to believe here? Let's get real. You have to believe Phil Musk. Yeah, the only question is none of the claims have been found credible. So, well, the FBI apparently. What from, changes now? From what I heard, the FBI has or has seen in the past actual video footage. Because what Mel Phillips liked to do with these kids, these boys, 12 and 13 year old boys, is ha- he would wrestle with them in his hotel room in their underwear. And he would ejaculate on them. And that's in the lawsuit. I'm, I'm, Making this up. Yes. So there is video, but the problem with the video, according to what I am I am understanding, the problem with the video that the FBI did see is that it's not explicit enough that there's sexual intent on video. And that was the issue with the video evidence. So I don't know about you, Vegas, but I'm sorry to cut you off, but how many 12 or 13 year old boys have you rolled around with in a hotel room? Well, I mean, none that okay. I know of. All right. Well, there well, you go. Unless I was 12 or 13. So, but not there you when go. I've been older. So the suit was filed in Baltimore County, Maryland, on behalf of five John Doe's. Alleges Phillips would recruit children to work as ring boys, helping him run errands and set up for the WWF events. However, the job was a guise for sexually exploiting the boys, which Phillips would do even in front of the wrestlers and executives in the locker room area. The lawsuit alleges that McMahon was aware of Phillips' abuse of the children. In fact, the lawsuit alleges McMahon admitted that he was aware as early as the 1980s that Phillips had a peculiar and unnatural interest in young boys. Remember, this is the same Vince McMahon who on his own documentary said, well, if I did rape her, the statute of limitations had already expired. Let's remember that this is the same Vince McMahon. Phillips worked for the WWF in the 70s, 80s, and 90s as a ringside announcer and crew chief. He died in 2012. It was common knowledge in the WWE among the ring crew, wrestlers, and executives that Phillips surrounded himself with a posse of underage ring boys, including when he traveled across state lines and stayed in hotel rooms with the children. According to the lawsuit, the McMahons fired Phillips in 1988 after allegations about him sexually exploiting children continued to surface, yet they rehired him six weeks later, and the lawsuit alleges that he continued recruiting young men to be sexually exploited. The lawsuit alleges the McMahons rehired Phillips on the condition that he, quote, steer clear from kids, yet he did not, and they knowingly let it happen. Phillips would often film his sexual abuse of the underage ring boys on video camera. There you go. There's the videotape I just mentioned. That's in the lawsuit. So here we go. Stories are starting to add up now, aren't they, Joey Vegas? After decades of suffering and silence from their childhood trauma, these survivors come forward now to hold McMahon and the WWE accountable for their conduct in allowing the systemic and pervasive abuse by Phillips. The lawsuit alleges no one's going to be criminally charged or no one has ever been can't criminally charge phillips because he's fucking dead but and you're not going to charge mcmahon or linda mcmahon because obviously there's not enough proof well they also didn't do anything that doesn't mean it you could still be charged an accessory after the fact true if if i murdered someone and went and told you hey i murdered someone and and, i didn't and you didn't say anything i wouldn't i know but which, you know, surprises me sometimes. But, you know, I'm glad you, if I murdered someone, you wouldn't tell anybody that I did. Um, but the biggest thing here is it's not a criminal uh, a court, so you don't have to go with the, uh, you know, burden of proof or anything like that. Uh, I definitely think they'll probably get some money. They probably won't go to trial because if TKO is involved, they're going to be like, shut up. Yeah, they're going to, they want $300 million. Yeah, they'll, pro- they'll, they'll, they'll probably settle for $100 million. They'll they'll settle before this thing because you don't want this thing to go to trial. But here's the deal: TKO. What happens when you buy companies, especially companies ran by Vince McMahon? Is now you you have you're gonna fall on a couple of swords now because the statute of limitations is is, is been lifted on this stuff, which as it should be. So now it, it, you're free. if you fucked up, people have now they have the ability to come after you for it. Well, monetarily, they always have the 
the ability. It's and they're going cr- to criminally, they couldn't if they even wanted to. Um, and I don't think there'd be any proof that they did this because a video of them rolling around in a hotel room, while it's disgusting, there's no actual evidence that he did an, any sexual things with the kids. Correct. That's what that yeah, that's that was the problem in the eighties is that the the visu- the videos weren't explicit enough so sex- sexual intent. Although I can make the argument a grown man not have twelve year olds in their underwear rolling around in a hotel room. But, but that's just me. But that's hearsay. And you're also you talking can't. about a time I need to add this. You're also talking about a time when in the eighties when Vince McMahon could make things go away. Jimmy Snuka murdered his girlfriend on a Tuesday. He was wrestling on Friday. You can't do that in today's day. That would never fly. No. Okay? No. It flew in 1983, but it would not fly in 2024. But that's a, that's a fact. He killed her on a Tuesday. He was wrestling on Friday. And McMahon is credited for making that all go. So you're talking about an era where McMahon has been able or had been able to make things disappear. So to answer your earlier about why didn't you say anything now or back then, because things mysteriously never came. And the wrestling business in the 80s is not looked at the way it is now in 2024. Everybody covers right. Anything, anytime anything happened, it's covered on media outlets that would not have touched wrestling in the 80s. Because wrestling in the 80s is a fake shit, and nobody cares about it. It's phony. Everything's phony. The guys, the wrestlers that die, it's all phony. But in 2024, the shit gets covered like it's a legitimate sport. Yes, but now. In the 80s, I understand. They were kids. They didn't know anything. They, they weren't going to say anything. And obviously, the parents, if they knew, they weren't going to say anything because it was, a, you know, it went away. But you waited till 2024. Not 19, 8, 9, 1995, 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, but, when you, so, but, when, but when you are sexually abused, it sometimes it's been a proven fact that sometimes it takes decades before you're ready to come forward. Well, correct, but we don't know exactly what happened. I mean, if he's just, you know, well, like I said, he used to ejaculate on these kids. That's well, one of the things that's in the lawsuit. Well, it's eighty-one it, pages. Yeah, I know somebody who read it, listened to a podcast, somebody who read it, and he said his quote was, "Of all the lawsuits that have ever been filed against WWE, WWF yeah. in the past." This was the most well-written and descriptive lawsuit ever, and that's Dave. So that was his perspective. He's been covering this stuff since the 70s. So, you know, I didn't read the 81 page, but 15 years ago, Yankees last won their World Series. I started my show the following night because I was doing the Ford show live back then, as I am now. Something's never changed. I started that first show back. Joey Vegas, you were not there. This was a time period where you were not on the floor. But I started that show with final out, the final call being called by Joe Buck. Yankees are champions of baseball, 27th time. If they win this year, I'm going to start the following podcast with the last out so everyone's away. The Yankees haven't been there in 15 years. I was 26 years old the last time they were there, and if you're doing the math, that's how it's going to be. They ain't going to be back until I'm 56. So I'm going to celebrate like a motherfucker if the Yankees win the World Series. It's a big-time series. It's the series that Fox wanted. It's the series that MLB wanted. We're going to find out real soon how nationally baseball can be on a popularity level in terms of television ratings. 
because this is outside of, as Joey Vegas and I have talked off the air, outside of Yankees Cubs, this is the biggest matchup that they could possibly have in the World Series. Because you can't get the Dodgers and the Giants, you can't get the Yankees and the Red Sox. This is it. Joey Vegas, I am anxiously awaiting first pitch tomorrow night. Game one. My gut says Yankees in seven. Yankees in six, seven. If it goes to seven, boy, I think those are going to be some big numbers. I don't think it'll go seven. A lot of people are saying seven, but I think it's just because it's just. That's what everybody hopes. I think people want it to be seven. Yeah. No, it, I don't think it'll go seven. I know you're going to piss me off, and you're going to pick the Dodgers. I know you are, because you love to piss me off. Even if you don't want it to happen, or even if you don't believe that it will happen, you'll get on here, and you'll radio work me, and you'll tell me Dodgers in six just to piss me off. So go ahead. Get it out of the way now, asshole. You know what? I, I hope both teams lose, actually, because uh, I hate the Yankees, and uh, I don't like the Dodgers. Either I I really wish this wasn't the World Series. Your hate for the Yankees is because of, of you. Oh, well, I think. Yeah. But I'll be, I will say for the record, I don't hate the White Sox because of you. Um, well, mainly because they never win. Maybe well, that's why. You, well, no, no, I win. No, I hate. They don't the, win champions. No, I hate but. the Yankees the same way that you hate the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, but they don't. But I hate the Bulls because they always beat my Knicks. I know you don't hate the Yankees. The Yankees no. don't always beat the White Sox. No in the playoffs. No, the White Sox are never in the playoffs. Correct. But I hate the Yankees because when I was growing up, I wanted my White Sox to be in the World Series, and they never were, obviously. And the Yankees were winning championships left and right. That's why I hate the Yankees. Just like you hate the Bulls, even though the Bulls knocked the Knicks out numerous times, and Knicks could never get over that. But the but a lot of other people, I can guarantee you, you talk to Utah Jazz fans, they probably hate the Bulls. Right, don't take me, don't take us down that. I know, so, ba- I know, basketball season starting now, but yes, don't take us down. Because I don't care about Let's baseball. Let's go back to ninety six, yeah. ninety eight. Yeah. yeah, we're not going to go back. Nine. Yeah, yeah. Thousand. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're not going to go back to when oh, the Bulls okay. were good. To, correct. Yeah, we're going to go we're when the Whites, the, the Yankees were good. Correct. Yeah. No. So, all right. Yeah. So, go ahead. Make your you 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 were like you even said to me off the air. You said. Oh, that's great. I get to make a, a, a World Series prediction because we're recording before the series. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, if I was betting, if I'm betting my money, I would say Dodgers in six. Yes. But is that your official Joey Vegas pick? Well, yes. If I'm betting, if I'm betting Dodgers in six, that's only if I'm betting money. But if I'm not betting money, I need the Yankees to win because if the Dodgers win, um, then my significant other will be of excru- excru- excruciating pain. The Yankees in what, six, seven, five? Well, I don't think five. I, I, I think six. at least goes six. I think you're going to get two trips at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, so I'll tell you this much. I know a lot of you, when you listen to this, the World Series is probably well underway. If the Yankees don't win game one or game two, they're toast, and that's the end of that. Hope the Yankees win the World Series. Here's Vegas' pick. Joey Vegas. Finally, I get my picks in. This is it's been I've been I've been waiting for you, this moment. You are 13 and 8 on the season. I am. You have gone back to back. Let me put you over here, kid. You've gone back to back weeks of perfection. Mm-hmm. Three and zero. Three and zero. You're on a six game winning streak. Yep. You are killing it right now. You're yep. 13 and 8. If you could go three and zero again, this would probably one of your more epic runs. Yep. Yeah, it's it, it's amazing. So here are my picks for week eight. The first pick that I'm going to do, I'm going to go over them really, really slowly. So Ford gets mad. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, first pick is going to be Green Bay. Uh, they're going into Jacksonville. Green Bay minus four. All right, then I'm going to go to Seattle, where it's always tough to play, but I think Buffalo does cover minus three against Seattle. Um, and then, because they have not let me down yet, 
The Chicago Bears are minus three in Washington. Now, as soon as we hear if Jaden Daniels is playing or not, I'm sure that line will move. So get it in now because if Jaden Daniels is playing, I'm sure the Bears will be plus money. But right now, Chicago minus three so in Washington. Wait then? Well, no, because if you wait and then he doesn't play and it gets worse. Oh. So you want to get it in now. Bears minus three. Bears minus three, yeah. My picks for week number eight, Chicago minus three at Washington, Buffalo minus three at Seattle, and Green Bay Fudge Packers minus four in Jacksonville. Leave a voicemail, 813-485-4130, 813-485-4130. The Menendez brothers, should they stay in jail or get out? It's one of the things you can leave us a voicemail about. You can also email me, Ford back at gmail.com i read every mail even if it's stupid buy ford merch.com patreon.com forward slash ford podcast if you want to help us out financially for as little as three dollars a month you get this podcast right away and you get it ad free we are a part of the bubba army podcast network don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to watch the show you could do so on youtube at ford podcast for joey vegas the cocksucker who's picking the dodgers I'm Ford. We'll see you guys next week. Always remember, if she ain't 280, she ain't a lady. Go Yankees. Good night, Jabroni March without a life that don't know if it's a work. When you work a work and work yourself into a shoot, Marks. See ya.